Greetings, boys and gits, and welcome to Dread War Gaming. In this episode, we're going to be scratch building Grok Tanks. It's coming right up. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> Okay, so as I said, we're going to be scratch building Grok Tanks, and this is actually the first of my scratch build along uh, series in which I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to build something with me. But the reason or the stimulus for me to do these videos is because I'm kind of doing this anyway. I am trying to make some products that I can have cast and I can sell to you guys. Orc products, of course. But I thought rather than just make stuff and cast it and put it out there, especially because I'm new to this, I thought rather than just do that, I'm going to actually show you the whole process. You know, so I'm actually going to build along with you. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this first series completely on YouTube. But then after that, I'm probably going to put this series onto Patreon and do a summary of, because each one is going to be about five episodes long each build. Um, I'll move it onto Patreon and then I'll do a summary video here on YouTube for everybody else. Um, but my patrons will be able to go there and you know follow the lessons and build along with me. Um, but I'm going to put this first one, all of them out there for you guys, just so you get a taste of where I'm going. Obviously, this is my first one, so I'll make a few mistakes, but you know, bear with it. And as I say, mistakes, make sure you watch this episode, particularly this episode, all the way through before you then try and follow, because I did make one or two mistakes as I went through, because I didn't make a plan, I just rolled with it. So uh, I was trying to think ahead most of the time, and I did pretty well at it. Don't get on at my case, you know? But yeah, I mean, watch the video first and then attempt it, all right? Hope you enjoy. This is Scratch Build Along, Rhino tank. And I say Rhino, of course, but we're going to be pulling the piss out of every Space Marine vehicle. So I'm going to make an optional Whirlwind turret. I'm going to make an optional Demolisher cannon and ram. And I'm even going to make a turret from that new Hover Rhino thing that they got out. Um, so I'm going to make it look like it can take the piss out of every Imperial vehicle in one little grot tank. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get stuck in. Okay guys, before we get started, let's just talk about tools. And this is probably the most important tool in this project, is a steel ruler. A steel ruler is better than a normal ruler because you can't cut through it with your knife. So plastic rulers aren't very good. So get yourself a nice steel ruler. You can probably pick one up from Poundland or somewhere like that if you're close to a discount store. They probably have that sort of stuff or arts and hobby stores and places like that. They're not too expensive. You get it for under a tenner at least anyway. Um, then you're also going to need something to cut with. Now your standard hobby knife will be absolutely fine for this. But you're going to probably need to use a 45 degree angle and be very careful of slipping. It's easy to slip with these knives because of the, the sort of angle of the blade. I much prefer to use this for more, more sort of sculpting and uh, chiseling away at plastic card and making definite cuts and things like that. When it comes to scoring, I much prefer to use a Tamiya Plastic Scriber 2, uh, which is available from hobbymad.ie, which is not a paid promotion at all, just that's my supplier of choice because they are fast and friendly. So get yourselves on over to hobbymad.ie, get yourself a plastic scriber. They don't cost much at all, but they're designed for scribing plastic cards so that you can get a nice perfect line across um, a ruler quite effortlessly and because of the angle of the blade they cut down into the plastic card much more efficiently than the angle of the blade does on your standard hobby knife so yeah definitely worth getting out hold of one of those now beyond those obviously we're going to need plastic card now what I'm using for this project is evergreen scale Scale models, styrene sheet, uh, it's 0.5 mil in width, thickness, or however you want to say it, right? Now, some of you guys may only have 
one mil plastic card, which is fine also. In fact, I'm not just gonna do it with the 0.5, I'll also do this project with one mil as well, just to show it can be done, but also so I can make two of these tanks because it, you know, why not? Um, the tank in question that we are building is going to be, of course, the Rhino, as you will have seen in the title, of course. So, the Rhino tank is a classic tank that the Orcs like to loot. And in fact, the green one even does a kit that you can purchase that basically has got all the bits you need to orc up a Rhino tank. So what I'm looking to do is to suggest that a bunch of grots have in their scrap heap been looking at the Orcs with their looted Rhino and taking pride in their salvaged uh, you know, battle winnings and uh, the Grots have decided that they want to make one too and just so happens that the Orcs don't actually, when they usually loot a Rhino, they tend to a lot of the time anyway, or a lot of Imperial uh, uh, tracked vehicles, is they'll, they'll widen the tracks quite often or change the tracks because they just think that Imperial tracks are just too weedy. So you'll end up with, and uh, many of you uh, Orc scratch builders will end up with a bunch of these tracks and wheels in the scrap heap and I'm going to suggest that these grots have got their hands on them and they've, they're going to use them for this project but don't fear and this is why I'm doing two I'm going to do one where we actually do use these parts and I'm going to do one where we actually don't and we scratch build them um, but if you do have them they're very useful and you're going to find them a nice time saver for this particular project and also these wheels actually turn out that if you put them onto a square they are basically uh they're one centimeter in in the height and uh, width so they're 10 mil and a 10 mil wheel is going to sit very nicely with our design because what we're doing is we're going to shrink this rhino down 50 percent because that way it should fit quite nicely with other block tanks so here we are with a drawing and here is a standard grot tank track. Now, when I say standard, I mean by Cromlech, Forge Weld, and even um, Foxbox standards, because all of those guys use turrets of 18 mil diameter with a 17 mil uh, diameter plug on the bottom of the turret. Uh, so they can all be interchanged, and Forge Weld and Cromlech's tracks can also be interchanged, and they actually meet up underneath in the, with these just just a little piece of uh, peg there, a little card, and we can, we can make that too on ours. But the general idea is, is you get a whole bunch of holes and a whole bunch of tracks and a whole bunch of turrets that all fit together. So we're gonna make ours fit in with that. Although in shrinking the Rhino to fit a Grot tank, it's gonna be slightly smaller. But then don't forget, we're gonna have the wheels on the bottom as a Rhino does. And the track so that's going to add a little bit on the bottom here so although it's only 20 mil here and these are actually 35 mil in maximum height standardly the grot tank tracks um it doesn't matter ours is going to end up being 25 28 maybe 30 anyway so it's not really going to notice at all and they will still fit against the other holes as well now all of the holes are 25 millimeters wide so you can go ahead and from your plastic card, your 0.5 or your 1mm plastic card, you can go ahead and cut yourself a whole bunch of 25mm strips. But don't make the, any of these cuts because these are not actually cuts. These are going to be uh, perforated lines, so they're going to be scored and bent. So we'll do that bit together. But if you want to go ahead and cut yourself a whole bunch of 20mm strips and following these dimensions, you basically on your 20mm strip, you're going to draw yourself a 5mm line there, 32.5 along the edge, 45 along the bottom, and basically copy this diagram onto your strip. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And this diagram too, which is the whole sides, which this strip is going to fold around. So you see this red line here, that represents the front piece here. So we've got 2.5mm uh, before the first fold, which is that front vertical part there before you come up to the flat roof, which is this 40 mil part here, which is where we're probably gonna put our turret, but we'll come back to that in a moment anyway. And then we've got this bit here, 15 millimeter, which is on this diagram, the back door. 
and then with 45 mil with the bottom and the five the front 15 plus then so we're not going to make a cut here that's why I do not cut just yet because when you actually fold this this hull strip around these sides that you've cut out you will might find that you may be a bit short so we won't cut that just yet um, but yeah you can go ahead and do as I'm about to do and cut yourself some little strips so I'll come back to you in a jiffy when I've got some little strips cut here is a strip of 20 mil and here just to show you is one of the sides that I've cut out and so all you're going to do is you're going to line it up just make sure that the two edges are nice and straight and then you're going to draw around the edges um, do it a lot neater than I'm doing now I'm just you know obviously I'm over the camera and then you're going to cut this out and use your metal ruler when you do that and your scribing tool um, so just for demonstration purposes I'm not actually going to make the cut because I didn't draw that very well but you're just going to line up your ruler with the line that you've drawn and then you're just going to rock your scriber backwards and forwards across that line that you've cut and it will start to cut it. Now when you do cut, as I have done, and I've made my four at least from the from the 0.5, you're going to end up with a good amount of scrap edges. Now don't throw this precious plastic gold away, right? Get yourself a nice drawer or box. I've got a drawer here, it's my plastic card off cuts drawer. So all small bits go into that drawer there, all of them, and that just goes into my cupboard there. Now I've got a larger plastic cards off cuts bit and then, then there's the main off uh, plastic card box for bits that are still of you know good usable sizes. Um, but yeah, go ahead and make yourself a plastic card off cuts box. It will save you in the future when you want to make some orc dags and teeth and stuff like that. Now what you will notice is that these aren't all perfectly perfect. There are some edges, particularly that top edge there and there, um, some of the back edges too that aren't quite perfect, but it doesn't matter. We're not being anal. This is orc building after all, okay? So don't worry if you didn't get it perfectly straight all the way around, and especially not if you start cutting with one mil because it's going to be that little bit thicker, a little bit more difficult to get right. But what I can say is once you've got your few built, if you sandwich them together, as we do here with these four, you can then take yourself a file and you can just run them along a file and actually catch the edges and sort of straighten them up a little bit. But don't overwork them because we don't want to send them back and make them smaller. So, you know, just, just to tidy up a little, but don't overdo it, okay? So now we've also got our whole piece cut, which is uh, 25 mil wide. Now the reason I said you can cut a whole bunch of these is because we're going to make a whole bunch of these got tanks in different sort of styles. We could do some original styles, we'll do some other um, tanks that are sort of like Mickey takes of other Imperial tanks. We'll do a miniature Lehman Russ. Um, well, I'll let you guys decide what we'll do. Maybe I'll put it out to a pole perhaps or something like that. But definitely worth having a whole bunch of hull strips. And if you once you've finished and you've got a bunch of them left, just write hull or grot tank hull on them and that way you won't forget when you come to use them again so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to mark on this strip the first perforation line at 2.5 millimeters in um, and I'm going to mark that line I'm going to mark the next few lines but, and then I'm going to come back to you because we're going to score them together okay so one thing I would like to also demonstrate to you just quickly is I've, I've made I've measured my two marks there at 2.5 in but rather conveniently my metal ruler just so happens to be exactly 25 millimeters wide so that means I can actually use the end edge to draw this as long as I line up the plastic card with the ruler perfectly then I'm going to get a nice squared edge rather than laying the ruler the other way and maybe being slightly off so there's a nice little trick for you. So just check your ruler width because it might actually be to your advantage. So now I know that that's a nicely square 2.5mm strip and it's not 
shorter on one end than the other. So there you go, there's a little trick for you. So I made all the marks all along. This is the last line, the one I said I'm not going to cut. So I'm going to take it a little bit further and cut it just there. So that's where I'm going to cut now. So then we're just working with this strip for all the uh, scoring and bending. The important thing when we're doing this scoring is to only go down so far. So we're only looking to sort of go down halfway through the plastic card at most. Because we want it to bend, but we don't want it to snap. If it does snap, it's not the absolute end of the world. We can repair it, fix it, glue it back together, it's fine, but you know, it's just easier to have it bent than it is to have cut pieces all glued together. So just a gentle scoring. Let's have a look, see how that's looking. Yeah, I can slightly see through it a little. See? So that should be enough, I reckon get a bit of bend on now it is so close to the edge so it's going to be a bit of an awkward awkward bit to bend I'd say I might use the edge of a ruler slightly to and this unfortunately this front part is a 45 degree bend anyway so it's it's going to need to go quite 90 degree bend even sorry even so it's going to need to bend over quite a bit I need to score this bottom corner just a little bit more I can see I should probably do it Let's try that. yeah oh there we go heard the first parts of a snap there but that's okay because uh, when we come to do the the latter bit when we actually do have that at 45 degrees I mean it's still holding on at the moment but uh, we will be running glue around and uh, filling in anyway so that's fine we'll leave that as it is for now and we'll just score these next ones won't need to uh, bend these ones as drastically some of them so some and some so you know like I say if they do snap it's not the end of the world keep the part because it's going to be used you see as this part is going to be used going round that front part there so there's our first piece you see where we're going so the next bend which is here is going to bring this bit down here so it's going to be quite a bend too in fact it's going to be more more of a bend than that front one so snapping is normal don't worry about it uh, but you know try to escape it if possible but what we're generally going to be aiming to do is stick this to this either side uh, what I suggest we do though is we do one side at a time because that way we can actually lay one down flat like that and we can actually bend it round it and that also if we was to try and attach it to both pieces at once it'll end up not being as straight but also if we do it down this way and we actually complete the box we can make some supports for inside to strengthen it up or we can also fill it with filling putty, which is what I'm going to be doing because um, I'm making my mini tanks to actually be cast friendly. So although yours can stay hollow and you can just have a, a honeycomb in here or a couple of crosses or whatever to hold it a little bit of strength, I'm going to actually uh, make some uh, places to push some putty inside because you, you want to fill it out and not have any air inside when you're uh, casting apparently as so I've been told so that's what I need to do in order to be able to send it off to be cast so that's what I'm doing okay so now I've cut this hull strip away from the strip I've written hull on there just so I can push that aside and I know that that's for got tank holes I've also done the same in the one mil plastic card too scored them both as you can see as well they're a bit springy um, so put the one mil one aside for now so what we're going to do is we're going to take this side and we're basically going to put this edge up against this edge here. This is where that's going to fold over and we know that that's going to come around. So we're going to come up across a bit of a problem. I could have done with an extra millimetre perhaps on this length here, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We're going to go with sticking the bottom on and the top on and this front side bit and then that back door bit will uh, it might actually snap and we'll just glue it and we'll fill the gap so that's fine so I'm gonna glue this um, now rather than gluing it 
on top of this piece, we're putting it on the outside, on the parameter of it, right? So the glue is going to go on the outside edges of this piece, um, and maybe along the edge, of course, on, on this. I'm using uh, Humbrol Liquid Poly, but you can use any liquid poly, any kind of poly cement will do. But this one's handy because it's got a brush, so it's kind of easy to, to apply on these sorts of things. Okay, so I'll come back to you once I've got this glued. Actually, before I do that, one more thing I forgot to say, sorry, is I've cut another strip that is the whole strip, obviously, as we already know, is 25 mil wide. But I've cut another strip that's 24 mil wide. See, that's why it's written there. Um, now, the purpose of this is, as I was saying, we're going to want to reinforce this. So this is just one mil thinner than this hull is. But this hull is on both sides going to have a 0.5 piece of plastic card. So this is going to sit just perfectly in between the two. And I've cut them at um, 15 millimeter, or not cut them yet, but I've made the score line to cut them at 15 mil wide there. So that once they're inside of this, they're going to, as you'll see here, that they're going to sit just perfectly with the height as well. Okay, so that's why I've done that. So um, you can cut yourself a strip of um, plastic card at 24 mil and break off some bits at 15 mil width, just as supports as you are about to see. You'll see it in action as I glue it together. Now I've just glued across just that bottom ridge there, the small bit, and the very bottom. And I'm just leaving it to dry because you need to do this bit by bit. If you try and glue it all at once and try and push it round, I guarantee it's going to just pop off. It won't sit straight. It's going to be a pain in the bum. So just be patient. Do it bit by bit. Okay, so now I've got the sides on. Um, I've got quite a bit of a gap there now. Actually, the top is falling just shy by about a mil as well. Um, so what I'm going to do... So I'm actually going to attach the other side on. So this side here, I'm going to fit this on, squeeze it all around and get it nice and tight and glued in. And then I'm going to break this tab off and make a new one, just slightly bigger, just to fill that gap. So you guys, you might want to um, allow an extra mil, maybe, on the corner where the roof and the door meet, maybe on the top and on the on the back. Uh, give yourself an extra mil, and if it if it uh, is sticking out too much, you can file it down. You know what I mean. So uh, the other way you can go about it is rather than cutting it from the one strip, you know, you can do it with two strips. That way, you might find it easier to join up the two slightly longer ends. So if you give yourself, if you say like we cut there, for example, we can do the uh, top piece and the door and the bottom piece and the front and we can have an extra allowance on either end to you know make sure that this doesn't occur okay but anyway we'll get that done it's easy peasy and I'm sure any of you guys that are following this so far have, who have cut out some shapes and stuff will find this no real challenge so move on shall we now I've made a mistake <laughs> so you know you guys like I say, watch it first so that you don't make the mistake and then follow it through a second time knowing I've made the mistake. So I'm not going to make the mistake with the one mil one because I haven't done it yet. But with this one, what I didn't do, so I've had to pull the roof off, was I didn't cut my hole for the turret. And I am deciding that it's going to go basically right in the middle. Um, as you can see inside there, there's the supports that we put in. So I've just pulled that off. That's fine. Take that side, cut it. So if you've already done this step, if you didn't watch the video through first and you just followed me as I was going, sorry, you're going to have to pull the roof off and do what I'm doing now. But yeah, we're going to cut that with the compass. Um, like I told you before, it's going to be 18 millimeter diameter that we're going to want to cut. Um, and then it will accept other grot tank turrets. Um, like I said, one of my... Uh, or the reason that I'm going to make mine slightly different to what you'll need to do. I mean, you guys can just get away with just doing these supports. 
but with my one mil one, I'm actually going to fill the inside with putty so that it's a solid piece so that it's easier for casting so it doesn't have any air bubbles in it or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this cut out and then I'm going to draw and cut out the circle on this roof panel on this one before bending it or before gluing it to the sides at least. Okay. Now with these compass cutters, it really is just a case of patience, gentle patience really. You just take your time with them. Just keep going. Sometimes you get little sort of knots. Um, and that's just where you didn't get the line quite smooth as you started it off. Um, so it's got a little uh, jump spot, a bit like a record would jump. So just be careful with that because sometimes that can kick the blade out. And um, yeah, you can create a off circle. It can throw your compass apart and uh, yeah, really mess things up. So just be slow and patient. Take your time with it. And uh, don't forget that we don't actually need the centre part. So if it comes to it, and what I quite often would do if I'm doing this sort of thing is you can drill into this centre part and cut out with a knife to that rim that you've cut and then you can very neatly follow that round. It's fairly easy to do, so that might be what I do, especially with this one mil one. This one should be a bit easier. I've only drawn it out and just given it one score round. So I'll get these cut out and I'll let you know if I have to drill it as well. So yeah, at least with the uh, one mil one, I did opt to drill into it and just cut with a knife so that I can actually snap these out being a bit gentle as I do it. I don't want to break these thin edges. Just got to be a bit careful. Oh, I'm going to break the end, end off. Not careful. I'll come back to this a bit fiddly. But yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Well, I got that done. I just need to tidy it up a little bit. But in doing so, the front folded piece snapped off. So I'll keep that aside because I'm going to need that. Now when it comes to filing this hole, you can use a, a file, particularly a rounded one would be handy. You can also use your your knife. You can just, you know, gently just run that around and get off any chafe bits. Or another thing you can do is you can use one of these rotary tool bits. Just be very careful as you do it because you don't want to end up taking the shape of the circle out of it. So yeah, don't ruin it. But yeah, those are a couple of options. We just yeah, only want to tidy it up a little bit, just that it will um, happily take one of the uh, got tank turrets, that's all. And if you've got a got tank turret handy, like I should have, ta-da, you can prove that it works. Like so. So now, yeah, nice. Good job. Not bad at all. So lovely. Just a little bit of play. But once you've got a magnet in there, no worries. So now I've got obviously cut the... Uh, the 0.5 mil one for the uh, the thinner version. Okay, so I've got both of those done. Um, I ended up actually filling them both with the green stuff. Um, it also is useful because then when you come to making the turret hull, you've got a bit of support in there for any turret that you put in as well. So it's kind of handy for that purpose and it gives it a bit of weight too. So you know, if you want a bit more of a solid model, there's no reason why you shouldn't just have a go at you know, filling it with green stuff if you have some to spare or some other form of modelling putty. Um, but yeah, there we go, there's the holes done. And because one is 1mm one and one is 0 0.5, there's a slight size difference, as you can see. That's no worry. I think actually the 1mm one, one is the one that I'm going to um, use the GW tracks with, and the smaller one will be the one that we make them for, I think. Um, so, in the next episode of the Build Along on the Rhino Grot Tank, um, what I'm going to do is work on those tracks with you guys. So, uh, what you're going to need for the next episode will be, of course, if you have some uh, Games Workshop tracks, then what would be useful to have would be two of these four pieces and six of these two pieces ones. That's what would be very useful. And also, if you have eight of these um, wheels for the tracks. okay. Um, but if you don't have them, it's not a problem. 
Uh, the other thing that we could use is some plastic rod. Now this is uh, one centimeter or 10 millimeters in diameter or width there. See, if I put it across a square, you'll see what I'm talking about. As you know, these are one centimeter squares. So get yourself some tube. Doesn't matter if it's hollow or not. In fact, you know, if it's not, it's probably more useful for at least the wheels perhaps, but then later on if you want to use it for gun barrel, which we are going to do, um, because I'm going to make this Rhino have the option to be a demolisher and a, a whirlwind and all that sort of stuff too. So this would be useful for that project as well. Um, the other thing that would be useful to get would be some one centimetre square plastic tube, square tube. Um, that's another very useful thing. Uh, although you can do without it, we can make this obviously out of plastic card. It's not difficult, it's just a nice time saver if you can pick it up. Um, another thing, again, which is a, just a nice time saver, this is a square. It's very, very difficult for you to see. But that's a square end on that. And that is a one mil square. Obviously it's not hollow, it's solid. Uh, and that again is just for bracing when you're using pieces of plastic card and you're wanting to square them up it's useful for bracing more so for you guys that aren't filling the voids because I'm going to be filling most of my voids with um, green stuff as I've done here which gives you a bit of support and something to push against anyway it fills in the gaps and all the rest anyway but this is a useful thing for you guys to pick up also and uh, any other size of plastic tube really um, this one particularly I've picked because it fits the size of magnets that I'm going to go using. Um, so if you've got yourself some magnets, try and get yourself some tube that allows your magnets, this isn't actually the size I'm going to be using, but allows your magnets to sit inside the tube because what we're going to do is we're going to cut ourselves some little um, cuts off of these tubes which are going to be housings for magnets, okay? So that's another useful thing to have. Uh, obviously we're going to also be wanting our compass cutter again, we're obviously going to want our knife, our plastic scriber, our pencil, something to do some filing with, and also for cutting these tubes, one very useful tool is a plumber's uh, pipe slice. So this is my old one from back in the day when I was an engineer, and this is a brand new one that I bought when I couldn't find it. And as Sod's Law always dictates, if you can't find something, buy a new one and the old one will always turn up. So there you go. We're also going to want some Vaseline because that's a vital lubricant for your tool when you are doing a little bit of green stuff in. So a little bit of green stuff, if you're going to go that way, it's good for filling the gaps. You don't need it for this project, but it is useful. And especially later when we add little details as well. So like, you know, a little bit of green stuff to do a bit of sculpting very good indeed and of course your liquid poly or whatever polystyrene cement of choice that you're using for this project and last but not least of course the old metal ruler don't leave home without it all right guys i will see you in part two of the rhino grot tank build see you soon <laughs>